Hey everyone, it is me Jacob and today I am back with yet another video. Now this one is a pretty special one because I've never gotten this many requests to do a single video. Over 100 people asked me to do this video. It is about the BBE entrance exam. Um, I talked to my friend Benjamin who is a BBE student. We talked for well over 20 minutes about the exam, about all the aspects of it, about um, just the experience of writing it, about the matter which you need to actually know, the best preparation technique, the techniques that he used. So I feel like a lot of you are going to, uh, you know, this will bring you a lot of value. If it does, and even before you watch this video, please make sure to subscribe and like for future videos like this about VEU, Vienna, Austria, if you're new here especially, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. And uh, please enjoy the video and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace. All right, everyone, I am back with my friend Benjamin, who is a first year BBE student. You've already seen him in the um, BBE, the first BBE video I did about just generally about the program. Today, we are going to be talking about one of the highly requested topics, which literally I've gotten hundreds of messages about, and that is the BBE entrance exam. So you obviously had to take the entrance exam. Um, so you have uh, a bigger picture, I guess, and um, a lot of people are really scared of it. I mean, you can't really blame them mm -hmm. uh, because it is a really, you know, crucial step um, in getting to VU. So, um, if you have any opening remarks, uh, let's hear them. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, to begin, I would say that the number of people applying were um, about the same in both the first academic year, which I applied and now for 2019-2020. Um, so I guess there was a small increase from, I think, 1,300 people applied in my year and now it's 1,500. But then there is also the, the fact to consider that there's double the spaces available, right? So with us, 120 people um, were accepted. In the end, they took 140 just because some, some other people swept through. Um, and this year, they will take 240 students. So the relative chance of getting in as a starting point, it's higher, yes. is, is higher and it's it's easier on the on the paper to get into. So that's the good news. We're starting with some good news. That's great. <laughs> um, so I would like to break this down systematically over the each each one of the three subjects. Mm -hmm. So the three subjects, obviously, math. Um, business, let's call it, well, how would you call it, business, basics. Basics in business. Basics of business, yeah. With a focus on microeconomics, I, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the English knowledge. Mm -hmm. So um, for each one, well, pick one. Let's talk about one of them. Let's start with, <laughs> let's start with maths, right? Maths. Mm -hmm. Why would we start with maths? Um, just because I think a lot of people uh, underestimate the difficulty. I had some... Underestimate, some, yeah. yeah. I had some struggles there, especially when it comes to the vocabulary, which we talked about in the in the first video as well. But uh, let's take maths as a starting point. Okay. So what I would like to know is, first of all, um, how long did you actually prepare for math? Um, which books do you use? Let's mm -hmm. cover that first, and then we're going to go from there. Um, when I take up, when I take the the entire time I spent studying and preparing for the entrance exam, I think maths took an overproportionate part of that time, just because I felt very insecure and I didn't really know what to expect. But on VU's website, there is actually a very clear structure on, on which topics will be featured in the entrance exam. And I wasn't surprised to see certain exercises and, uh, and didn't see other exercises. So what they list is uh, elementary algebra, uh, power functions, polynomial functions, and so on. So if you focus on the, on the topics that are listed on VU's website, I think you're, you're off to a good start. When it comes to the materials, um, there is a book mentioned on VU's website which is called Essential Mathematics for Economic Analysis and then you have certain chap chapters that are mentioned as well and for, for me personally that took the longest time just to, to get the uh, mathematical knowledge in, in the English language. That was, I think that was mm -hmm. the, the biggest hurdle for myself mm -hmm. because I understood it for, mat for Matura in, in Austrian secondary school you would have to do many of the topics that are Most requested the for things, the yeah for the entrance exam already, but all of them were in German. So I had to transfer all that knowledge first into English to understand it. Um, that was probably the, the biggest stepping stone for myself. Uh -huh, for maths, throw us a number, how many hours you spent, how, what would you say? Um, how many hours? Um, I would say, and that's what I mentioned in the first video as well, I studied about two to three weeks before the exam and hourly I would say in total, maybe 50 to 60 hours just for the maths part. 
Yeah. But that's for myself personally. And I, and I mentioned yeah. to so you So take before, everything with a grain of salt. That is one mm-hmm. thing that I've learned this year is that everyone has different difficulties with different subjects and never take someone on their word when, they're, when they say, you know, it's just, yeah, oh, you're, you're going to read that twice the script whatever and you're gonna pass it that does not work like that so please take your time and go through everything even if you think you know something go through it again and Mm -hmm. see where you actually stand um now one of the questions that um i've gotten a lot is um is there a trial test online which people can uh write and Mm -hmm. prepare themselves that way there is not a BBE entrance exam trial test, right? So there is not uh, any exam paper, not the exam paper that we did back in, in, in the summer of 2018. That's not available online, unfortunately. Maybe they will change that in the upcoming years. Um, what you can do, however, is you can go to srdp.at, which is the um, um, matura pa- the basically the preparation page from mm-hmm. the um, uh, political... Uh, educational ministry sorry yes, yes. Uh, of austria which you can use to prepare for the austrian matura and then there is the the matura parts which are for for all the sections you would take the maths part and then you would translate it into english right so there are actually um, exam papers that are completely translated into english and i would practice uh, some type one exercises there because it's only going to mo- going to be multiple choice and ticking exercises anyway so if you go to the srdp.at and go to maths and English translation, you will find some exam papers. Um, some of the topics covered in that are not part of the VU entrance exam, so you would have to distinguish navigate yourself, navigate yourself, yeah. navigate yourself, which is important and which is not. Yes. So um, another question is: um, Was so when you were studying maths, right? When you came to a problem that you didn't understand, obviously you said that it is um, on the level of the Austrian Matura. Mm-hmm. But when you studied, you could actually learn from the book. So the book actually explains all the steps. Plus, it has the um, the solutions and the tasks, mm-hmm. so you can actually practice with the book. You, so the book was the sole um, studying, let's say material but and then you tested your knowledge on the SRDP website as you said that's that's what i did i personally didn't even buy the essential mathematics book because it's quite expensive if you want to purchase it you can rent it out in libraries as well which is probably the the thing the i best, would suggest yeah. because you would need it for for yes. one year for, for one month only anyway um and then you can go through the through the chapters that i mentioned on Vue's website and there is um a very profound theoretical explanation in there as well a lot of the stuff that's mentioned in these chapters should be clear to you anyway. Just to hear it in, in English for myself was was um, a first timer because you don't hear about differentiation yeah. in English in your standard secondary school Austrian. Another thing I think you'd agree with is that all of this time that you will spend studying maths, it's not a wasted time. You will need all of this knowledge later. It will make your microeconomics macroeconomics later when you get into some other subjects it will make your life a whole lot easier if you learn these things mm-hmm. especially um oh my god i'm see my problem is now i know everything in german so i'm like <laughs> struggling so yeah as you as you said like the acclimatization with vocabulary is important mm-hmm. but um yeah for sure it is not a wasted time and also this book essential mathematics for economic uh, analysis is also part of the of the literature that's used in quantitative methods one and two. So if which you are would, one of the first exams, which the are the first courses in mathematics and statistics in the first two semesters. Um, so there is some need for it. If you want, really want to buy it and plan to get into the BBE program, you can reuse them later on in your studies. Okay. Yeah. So I think we've got maths covered there mm-hmm. pretty nicely. Uh, let's talk about English. What was mm-hmm. English like? First, if you could give people kind of a background on your own English knowledge, just okay. to you know have, you know, obviously speak English very well, um, but how are you with the academic English, or how were you before you started studying? Okay, uh, for the entrance exam. In school, I was uh, always quite um, confident with English. I have an uncle in the UK, so that that helped a lot, obviously. So I spend I spend my, yeah. some of my summer time always in 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 the UK. Um, which also made me very confident when it comes to the entrance exam, which also means from the proportion that we talked about earlier, from the study time, only like a very um, small part of the time actually went into revising on the English parts. Um, That's my personal English background. 
everything take everything with a grain of salt it's, yes. it's on a very personal personal level i can't tell you study for 10 hours that will do the job it very much depends on your own uh, personal experience and your past uh, um, academic work and and the achievements you had yes obviously but definitely people shouldn't under underestimate it as, mm -hmm. yeah I was actually uh, in the in the exam itself. I was quite uh, surprised to see that the level of English they, they they requested, especially for the reading exercises, was quite high. Those multiple choice exercises, following the I think it was two reading texts for my for my uh, entrance exam, each one with four to five multiple choice questions, and that was quite some high level of English. So yes. I was I was uh, not like uh, uh, confused with the, with yes, the yes. questions itself. I was just surprised to see that the level of English they request from the students is actually quite high. On that level, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is also justified because the whole degree is the in English, whole point, right? Yeah, so the whole point is to test your English knowledge. And, yeah. mm -hmm. English, I mean, nowadays everyone knows English to a certain degree and everyone thinks they know English. So it, it, it certainly makes sense to check people's English and to you know, kind of test it on a higher level mm -hmm. just to, to make sure. So again just an overview of the english subject study it uh what uh how can people prepare for it is there any are there any specific texts mm -hmm. they can read any specific methods you'd maybe recommend see i would um because i mentioned the reading exercises again the same page sdp.at you have some prior uh, exam papers from the austrian matura which are in English, obviously, yeah. because it's the English yes. English Matura, um, and you can do some some uh, of the language in use and, and uh, reading exercises there as well. There's obviously no listening exam. There's also no writing because they couldn't uh, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. correct all the writing, all the written text from from uh, a thousand people. But uh, do the reading exercises and the language in use exercises from those uh, from those Matura. I think the level of the Matura prepares you sort of well for the for the entrance exam, even though they will request a little bit of a higher um, um, general uh, level. This is also why they uh, accepted the, the certificates from CAE and FCE, I think, yeah. for, the for the entrance exam. If you have some study materials from, from when you practice for those certificates, I think rehearsing those and, and looking at them again will, will prepare you well as well. Um, a technical thing that I also wanted to discuss, um, for many people coming out of high school, um, a multiple choice mm -hmm. um, kind of exam um, type can seem like a dream. It's so nice. It's multiple choice. Um, I wouldn't say it is that easy. It makes things a bit easier, but it can only also make your life harder because you see all of the offered answer choices. Well, in math, not really, because in math, only one answer is going to be correct at the mm -hmm. end. So I th how many is in the entrance exam? Also, uh, there's five, five possible five answers, possible answers as well. Okay, yeah. So it's like, it's as you know, you're gonna find later at VEU, it is also five possible answers for most uh, exams. Um, so and for our entrance exam, it was either one, two, three or four questions, uh, four answers were correct. So you didn't have the number of answers that's correct yeah. in the entrance exam, which makes, as you said, life a bit difficult when it comes to multiple choice. People imagine it as being, well, it's just ticking yeah, the it's answers. Just ticking. But you really have to, especially for the microeconomics part, which we will come to mm -hmm. in a sec, um, you really have to read through the sentences in the in the answers and, and see whether that's Sometimes correct they are, or yeah, not. Yeah, they're going to try to catch you on a single word, on a single definition. You're mm -hmm. going to change it. I myself <laughs> have <laughs> encountered that and lost we many points over that. Um, so that is, again, one thing where, you know, careful, slow reading and your English knowledge also comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, also in, as you said, microeconomics. So let's talk microeconomics. Mm -hmm. um, here you really have to look at the material that's provided by VU. I can't give you any tips on how to study um, theoretical material that's uploaded as a PDF document. Yeah. You will have to study that and, and, and crunch the things and also the definitions that are in there yourself and also invest the time that you need to understand a 40-page PDF document. I can't tell you how long yes. it takes for, for, me to, for me to read a page is different than f uh, how long it takes for you to read a page and then to memorize it. People have different studying techniques. Um, I would, uh, I would uh, as a suggestion, I would, I would say 
don't focus too much on the on the um, hard on definitions but rather um, try to to get a, a very broad perspective on the uh, topics that are covered in that PDF document mm -hmm. not saying that if you read through it once you will understand it just uh, don't uh, like uh, wrap your head around the very small details and the very um, tight definitions just try to to grasp the the, the in general Again, general topic, yeah. again, understanding is here extremely important. Mm -hmm. So it is not something that you can, for say, learn, you know, just have it, you know, you need to practice it and you need to understand it, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, you need to, again, take your time, um, which brings me to a question that a lot of people, a lot of people are asking. And it is kind of a weird one for me, because as soon as I get asked this question and it is. Um, hey, do you think I can like learn for this in three weeks? Like, do you think I can maybe make it in two weeks? Um, if you're asking me that, then obviously you either don't have the intention of starting earlier or you can't start earlier. And again, here it comes again to not preferences, but personal abilities of studying. Again, I have friends who study for a single exam two days before it and pass it without a problem. Myself, I like to start a bit earlier to avoid the stress that comes with you know being on a tight deadline so uh for sure i mean right now it is what it is the 13th so the exam is in less than a month so by the time you see this video now is the time <laughs> to mm -hmm. start really um you have no time to waste to waste and uh, yeah i feel like and it also I wouldn't say start now, you have to start now. I would I would say we had very different approaches when it comes to people studying for our entrance exam. I talked to people that literally studied like a couple of days before and are sitting in the same benches that I am yes. sitting in, in the lectures now. So when it comes to personal preparation, there is no guideline, right? There is always this recommendation to, to start early and to try to get an overview of all the contents that are being questioned. But there is no um, a distinct hour counter that tells you if you study 24 hours, that will um, ensure that you will sit in the BBE uh, the academic BBE year 2019-2020. There is no um, yeah. exact figure. Yeah. Um, so let's say we've covered the we've covered that. If again, if anyone has any other questions, ask me on Instagram. Um, I will probably link you back to this video if you didn't, uh, if you missed something. Um, and also, I need to stress this out right now for all the um, technical questions regarding the entrance exam, you can ask the admissions team. Um, I was told that by the people from VU um, that we have a wonderful admissions team who are more than happy to answer all of your questions. So I will kind of, let's say, start rede redirecting people there when I'm not hundred percent sure in something so if I send you to the admissions office it's not because I I don't want to answer your question is probably mm -hmm. because I'm not uh, certain in my ability to you know give you the correctest answer so um, uh, let's talk about the actual experience of writing the exam mm -hmm. so you come there on I think it's 9th of July this year um, if you could pull that up. <laughs> um, now I really feel like we're on a podcast. Can you pull that up? I can. <laughs> so it's the ninth. It yes. is the ninth. Okay, so you come here in Vienna on the ninth. Um, obviously, the exam is, I believe, going to be in the afternoon. What I was think it? so. It's 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 both VU's entrance exams will be on yep. the ninth, and I think it's yeah. either morning or afternoon, yes, depending yes. on. Well, this year, the German, uh, there is also going to be uh, an entrance exam for people studying uh, in the German program. So um, I think that one will be in the morning. Mm -hmm. But so you come to Vienna, you come to VU, where do you go? What do you do? And when do you get the information about the entrance exam? Mm -hmm. The entrance, all the information you will need for the entrance exam will be sent to you via mail. I can tell you this much now. It will be held at the Messe Prata, which is the Messe Gelände at uh, Wien Kriau. Um, you just get out the tube there. Um, you will see a, a big crowd of people waiting there, probably. Anxiously. <laughs> that was, you, you really can't miss it. Um, 1,500 people at one place. Yeah. Well, 1,500 get invited to the exam. Yes. That doesn't mean 1,500 will Actually show Actually come. So right? that's another good thing. Um, yeah. So then you come in, um, how many people are you sitting with? I mean, it, it is, is it different than a high school exam? Of course. It's just, it's way bigger, first of all, and it's way stricter when it comes to what you can actually bring into the exam 
hall. It's like it's not a room. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a hall. hall. <laughs> um, um, we were very limited when it comes to to the things we could bring with us. There was calculators were allowed, um, like one or two pens, and then a bottle of water and some some snacks. I think in a plastic mm-hmm. bag. Like mm-hmm. all these, there's quite strict rules when it comes to what you can actually bring into the exam hall. But all of that information will follow via mail. So don't don't be worried. You don't have to write this down. Um, also, the, the, the model numbers of the calculators you can use and which are forbidden to use, that will, everything concerning the entrance exam and the specifics will, will be um, given to you early enough. Um, so the, the experience I had was, it was, it was quite new for me to go yeah. into a room with like your plastic bag. You see all these strangers because I didn't know too many people when I, when I yeah. started. Um, you see all these people and every everyone's there with the same goal to go into the BBE program and to write a good exam. So everyone's quite hyped and quite excited, obviously. And then you sit on these uh, individual desks. Like everyone has a spare desk with like two two meters to, to each side. So it's quite weird, the experience, because you really can't... <laughs> yeah, you've not... Yeah, you, you haven't cheat. had this experience. <laughs> yeah, you, but as well... I mean, it would be really stupid to try to cheat on an mm-hmm. entrance exam. Let's just get that out of the way. But this experience of writing the exam um, on a small table in a room of big people is what your university, um, of what your d- daily life in university is going to be like. So again, it is... Well, luckily, not new, daily, but... N- not <laughs> daily, yeah. You, you don't have exams every single day, but uh, monthly, let's let's say monthly, bi-monthly, at least, at, at the very best. Um, at first, and then later it kind of mm-hmm. gets rolling. But so it is definitely an experience which, you know, you will have to get used to have to get used to. Um, it's nothing scary. Just go and do your best, I guess. And I mean, yeah. you know, good luck, everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Good luck. So I was quite nervous as well, because it's like everything rests upon that one single day. And yes, the score you get de- determines whether you yes. get into VU or don't. So obviously there is this factor of, of uh, nervosity and then uh, people are always like hyped. And, and then after the exam, that was the worst time because everyone's talking about the questions. Everyone's obviously. talking, don't talk to anyone. That's, um, that, that's so me. Yeah. I don't know about you, but that's me. Like I never talk to anyone after an exam. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear anything. Probably just go for a anything. big coffee and then for a big, Yeah, it. let's call it coffee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess we have covered a lot. I mean, we have been talking for almost 24 minutes. Mm-hmm. So just maybe one quick remark about the post-exam. Yeah. Because it's all multiple choice and ticking exercises, the results will be out quite quickly. So I think two to three days after the exam, you will actually be sent an email uh, concerning uh, your score and whether you are among the top 240 people or not. Um, and everything goes on from there. So after that, uh, if you're into the BB program, you will register at VU and, and all those steps. But yeah, but again, you will you will deal with that after you get that email. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So you can record one of those, you know, really cool email openings there <laughs> online. Like when people get into Harvard, they're like, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, that is, that is it. Again, good luck, everyone. Um, just take it easy. Take it slow. Do your best studying. And just remember, it's a, it's a competition with yourself. I mean, it's also competition without that 1,500 other people, but do your best and I'm sure that, you know, you will reap the rewards. So that would be it, everyone. Um, Thank you so much for helping over a thousand people. Hopefully, um, if you have a friend or someone who's also um, taking this entrance exam, please make sure to send the video to them. If it helped you at all, please make sure to like the video and subscribe for future videos about VU, um, about student life, about Vienna. Check out my other videos. I have other videos which I feel like would be helpful for someone starting out in Vienna and, you know, um, just getting used to the daily life here. Um, That would be it for all the questions, as I said, on Instagram. Um, And you can also contact the VU admissions team, which uh, I'll leave a a link to their information down below as well. That would be it. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Peace. Good luck.